Good morning and welcome to Coleman Today. I'm your host, Katie Spicer. This is the official relaunch of Coleman Today, which was acquired by the Coleman Tribune. We hope all those who follow Coleman Today will enjoy this new format of delivering the news Monday through Friday. Now though, it's time to get into the news where we will touch on Governor Ivey and the Coleman County Commission declaring a state of emergency for Coleman County, how to keep pets safe during cold weather, Saban says goodbye, and a whole host of stories, including obituaries and local weather. Let's jump in to the top stories. A winter storm warning has been issued by the National Weather Service of Huntsville for Coleman County late Sunday evening and is set to expire on Tuesday, January 16th at 6 a.m. Heavy mixed precipitation is expected with total snow accumulations of up to 1 inch and ice accumulations up to 0.15 inches. Counties affected are Morgan, Marshall, DeKalb, and Coleman counties. The NWS has stated to plan on slippery road conditions. The hazardous conditions could impact the morning or evening commute, so prepare accordingly. Furthermore, impacts from the snow and ice are expected to be similar to the areas previously in the winter storm warning, so the upgrade highlights that fact. Precautionary and preparedness actions have been heavily suggested by the NWS Huntsville. If you must travel, keep an extra flashlight, food, and water in your vehicle in a case of an emergency. Also, keep a blanket or two in the trunk just in case. Governor Kay Ivey issued a state of emergency for 25 counties Sunday afternoon, including Coleman County. We are anticipating unusually cold temperatures in Alabama this week, so I'm urging everyone to be prepared, take caution when traveling, and stay safe and stay weather aware. The Coleman County Commission called an emergency meeting to discuss the impending weather and declare a state of emergency for the county. EMA Director Tim Sarton addressed the commission and explained the potentially dangerous storm. Sarton said that once the temperature dips below the freezing point, they aren't expected to raise again until Thursday afternoon. Freezing rain and sleet were being seen in other areas of Alabama on Sunday night, laying a level of expectancy as to what's to come. The Commission also touched base with the Coleman County Road Department in regards to the preparation of roads and highways throughout Coleman. Coleman County Engineer Philip Widener has his team prepared with graders, plows, trucks, as well as trucks fitted with calcium chloride sprayers, all designed to keep the roads as ice and snow free as possible. Visit the Coleman Tribune's website for a full video from Director Tim Sarton. Frigid temperatures are on the way, and while residents are preparing their homes for incoming freeze, family pets and outdoor animals shouldn't be left in the cold for long periods of time unattended. If at all possible, keeping pets indoors is always the safest option, says local veterinarian Melody Sharp. If inside is not an option, offering multiple shelter types outside with cover from the wind or moving them into a sheltered area like a garage or shed, being careful of any potential toxins that may be stored there as well. Boots, sweaters, and coats for outdoor animals are also an adorable way to protect those furry friends and keep them warm during a sudden or lengthy freeze. Other ways to help your furry companion stay safe during an intense cold snap is to utilize a rug or blanket to line possibly icy steps, avoiding the potential for injury while navigating a winter storm. Each animal should have access to clean, unfrozen water and a bed, which should be made of thick, dry bedding, such as blankets, sheets, towels, or pet beds. The bed, if at all possible, should be raised off of the ground to minimize heat loss. Hypothermia is a risk for any animal spending significant time outdoors in the winter. Checking for animals underneath and around cars before driving is something Dr. Sharp encourages everyone to do, saying it's also important to make noise before getting in and starting any vehicle, as this is a common place for our feline friends to find warmth. Creating noise before starting can allow them time to escape and negate the risk of injury from the vehicle. Coleman County Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster is pleased to announce that it will be able to open additional warming stations, bringing the total to five warming stations open on Monday and Tuesday night, January 15th and 16th, as the temperature reaches frigid single digits. Shelters will open both nights at 6 and close at 8 the following morning. Residents planning to stay overnight at the warming stations will have to check in by 9 p.m. If no one is on site by 9 p.m., the shelter will close for the night. Camp Liberty, located in the battleground area, will require everyone staying at the warming station to bring their own pillows, air mattresses, food, etc. Camp Liberty is located at 15719 Alabama Highway 157, Vinemont, Alabama 35179. 
The link will have cots and blankets provided by the Red Cross. The link is located at 708 9th Street Southeast, Coleman, Alabama 35055. Trinity Pentecostal will provide soups and sandwiches during the day in addition to being open as a warming station. Red Cross will be providing cots and blankets. Trinity Pentecostal Church is located at 307 Whaley Avenue, Hansville, Alabama 35077. Hansville Civic Center will have sandwiches and water provided by Hansville First Baptist Church as well as cots and blankets provided by the Red Cross. Hansville Civic Center is located at 902 Commercial Street, Hansville, Alabama 35077. Unsheltered International will be open Monday through Friday, January 15th to the 19th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It will provide snacks and drinks. Unsheltered International is located at 479 County Road 827, Coleman, Alabama 35077. Coleman County VOAD Chairman Wade Harbison said that he appreciated all the local churches, nonprofits, and government organizations working together to get the warming stations opened. Now, the big push is to make sure people who really need to get to these sites are able to get there. Harbison emphasized a lot of these folks may not have social media or get other news sources, so if you know of someone within your church, a neighbor, or anyone in the community who needs to utilize these warming stations, please help us by reaching out to them individually to make sure they can utilize the stations. We'll be right back after a quick break, so don't go anywhere. Sports is up next. back and ready to jump into some sports action. In a stunning announcement that's reverberated across the nation, Nick Saban, the legendary head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, has declared his retirement after 17 remarkable seasons. Saban, known for his transformative impact on college football, leaves behind a legacy of unparalleled success. Saban remarked, the University of Alabama has been a very special place for Terry and me. It's not just about the win, but the legacy and right way of doing things. Our goal was to help players create value for their future. Greg Byrne, Alabama's athletic director, praised Saban as one of the greatest in any sport, highlighting his career achievements. Seven national championships, 11 conference titles, and an astonishing 312 game wins. Saban's tenure has also seen an NCAA record of 49 NFL first-round draft picks and countless college graduates. With a collegiate coaching record of 297-71-1, including a 206-29 at Alabama, Saban's career has been extraordinary. He won a total of 11 SEC titles and secured seven national championships, with his first at LSU in 2003 before winning six with Alabama. Saban, who also spent two seasons coaching the Miami Dolphins, began his head coaching career at Toledo in 1990, later moving to Michigan State, then LSU, and ultimately finding a home at Alabama in 2007. This marks the end of an era in college football, as Nick Saban steps down from a career that's not only shaped the game, but also the lives of countless players and fans. Both the Eagles and Lady Eagles of Vinemont were back home Friday night to host a pair of varsity matchups against Susan Moore, and they split their battles with the Bulldogs. The Lady Eagles led Susan Moore early in the opening quarter, but the Lady Bulldogs were able to pull ahead 40-24 by halftime and went on to defeat Vinemont 69-55. Maggie Burks led the Lady Eagles with 15 points in the loss, followed by Reagan Robinson with 14 and Morgan Flanagan with 9. 
In the boys' game, Vinemont built a 30-19 lead in the first half, but was outscored 23-16 in the third quarter, bringing the lead down 46-42 by the start of the fourth quarter. The Eagles locked things down on the defensive end in the final eight minutes, holding the Bulldogs to just six points in the fourth and pulling away to win it 65-48. Vinemont was led by Caden Graham, who finished with 22 points in the win. Jeremy Harbison posted 17 points for the Eagles, and Isaiah Jones added 12. Vinemont will travel to Cold Springs Tuesday to take on the Eagles. In the wake of Nick Saban's retirement, the University of Alabama didn't waste time finding his successor. They have chosen Kalen DeBoer from Washington to lead be head coach of the Crimson Tide football team. UA Athletics Director Greg Byrne expressed excitement about welcoming DeBoer and his family to Alabama. Byrne emphasized DeBoer's proven track record as a winner and his impressive performance at previous coaching positions. We wanted someone who's not only great with strategies but also cares about his players, and we found that in Coach DeBoer, Byrne says. DeBoer's coaching career is remarkable, with 104 wins and only 12 losses over nine seasons, including a stellar 25-3 record at Washington. In 2023, he led the Huskies to the College Football Playoff National Championship game, secured the Pac-12 championship, and achieved a record-breaking 14-win season. Expressing his respect for Alabama's football legacy, DeBoer said, Following Coach Saban is an honor. Alabama's commitment to excellence is unparalleled, and I'm thrilled for this opportunity of a lifetime. He acknowledged the unique prestige of Alabama and his eagerness to continue the program's tradition of success. Notably, DeBoer is the first Washington coach to win 11 or more games in consecutive seasons and has a strong record in playoff games, boasting an 18-3 win-loss ratio. With DeBoer at the helm, the future of Alabama looks bright as it embarks on a new era under his leadership. A lot of action is happening in sports, so be sure to check with the Coleman Tribune each day for updates on games and other news happening in and around Coleman County. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. Now for some fast and furious news with our four stories in four minutes. Buckle up as we set off. Meteorologists are predicting the week ahead to be full of frigid temperatures and snowy scenes, and a local plumber is handing out tips on how to weatherize your home. Justin Barbie, owner and master plumber at Premier Plumbing, shares professionals' top tips to avoid disaster with your pipes as we prepare and anticipate for the freeze of a decade. Barbie says, insulating exposed pipes by shielding them with insulation or wraps, disconnecting and draining any outdoor faucets to avoid frozen water building up inside the pipes, and letting your faucets maintain a slow drip overnight can relieve pressure and potentially avoid bursting pipes. Faucet covers on outdoor fixtures, maintaining a consistent thermostat temperature inside, and leaving cabinet doors open, allowing warm air to circulate through every part of the house, can also cut down on the chance of a plumbing mishap. Attention students with a passion for the arts, Wallace State Community College is offering a unique opportunity to transform your talents into educational support. March 1st, from 8 a.m. to noon, the college's fine and performing arts programs will host scholarship auditions at the Borough Center for the Fine and Performing Arts. Open to all current and incoming students, these auditions are the gateway to scholarships starting in the fall 2024 semester. Whether your interest lies in singing, dancing, acting, playing an instrument, or working behind the scenes, there's a place for you. Wallace State's diverse performing arts program includes vocal and instrumental ensembles, dance, and theater, offering students the chance to audition for multiple ensembles. 
Scholarship recipients must be full-time students maintaining a GPA of 2.5 and meet specific program requirements. Opportunities span across various groups including concert band, jazz band, percussion ensemble, concert choir, Wallace State Singers, Vocal Jazz, the Allegro Dance Theater, and Wallace State Theater. These ensembles not only perform in numerous productions each semester, but also offer exciting travel opportunities nationally and internationally. Interested students can find audition requirements and registration information on the college's website. While pre-registration for auditions is recommended, it's not mandatory. Remember, completing the free application for federal student aid and scholarship application is essential before receiving any scholarship. Don't miss this chance to showcase your talent and earn financial support for your education at Wallace State. Relay for Life of Coleman County, known for hosting an annual event dedicated to raising funds and awareness for cancer research, has announced the dates and locations for its 2024 season. This year's Relay for Life will take place at Depot Park in downtown Coleman on Saturday, April 27th from 5 to 10 p.m. The Relay for Life Survivor's Breakfast will be April 24th at 7 a.m. at Coleman Church of Christ, and the Survivor's Dinner will take place at 5 p.m. on April 27th across the street from Depot Park. Relay for Life 2024 kicks off on Thursday, January 18th at 5.30 p.m. The first meeting of the year will take place in the Fellowship Hall of Coleman First Baptist Church, where participants, sponsors, and supporters will come together to launch this year's campaign. Expressing heartfelt gratitude to the community, Relay volunteers, dedicated teams, and generous sponsors, event team leadership chairperson Helen Allen emphasized the significant impact of collective support on the success for Relay for Life. We extend our sincere appreciation to the community, Relay volunteers, hardworking teams, and sponsors who have generously contributed to our cause in the past. Without your unwavering support, Relay for Life would not exist, and crucial funds for vital programs aimed at eradicating cancer would be unattainable, remarked Allen, highlighting the importance of education, prevention, and early detection in the fight against cancer. Don't forget that the Relay for Life 2024 kicks off on Thursday, January 18th at 5.30 p.m. at Coleman First Baptist Church's Fellowship Hall. The Town of South Vinemont is beginning the steps to form a new planning commission for their municipality. At its monthly meeting on the evening of January 9th, the mayor and council held their first reading of a proposed new town ordinance. Ordinance number 0190 would form an implementing and planning commission for the Town of South Vinemont. As listed in the ordinance, the Planning Commission will hold a total of nine seats consisting of the mayor or his designee, a town administrative official, one council member, and six residents from the town of South Vinemont. The residents that are appointed by the mayor must be registered voters of the municipality and will meet once monthly and serve a voluntary, uncompensated six-year term. The Planning Commission and its members will be tasked with researching zoning and other land development information before an official permit is cleared to be issued for any individual wishing to complete a building project on their property inside the town of South Vinemont's municipality. The second and final reading of the proposed ordinance will be heard at the town of South Vinemont's next council meeting, which will be held on February 13th, with the work session beginning at 5 p.m. and the meeting following at 6 p.m. Residents are invited to attend the meeting and voice concern or interest of participation in the proposed ordinance. That finishes up 4 and 4. We'll be back after a quick break. Welcome back to Coleman Today. Now for some somber news as we acknowledge those who have lost their lives recently with our obituaries. Bryant Perry. Bryant Perry, age 83, of Hansville, will be held at 1 p.m. on Friday, January 19, 2024, at Coleman Heritage Funeral Home. Burial at Hopewell Cemetery. Visitation will be from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. on Friday, January 19, 2024, at Coleman Heritage Funeral Home. Coleman Heritage Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Our hearts and prayers go out to family members and loved ones during this difficult time. 
Now for a look at today's weather. It will be cloudy with a chance of rain and freezing rain. A chance of snow and sleet is possible this morning before switching over to a slight chance of sleet in the afternoon. Little or no snow and sleet accumulation is expected. Ice accumulation could reach up to a tenth of an inch. Highs will be in the mid-30s with north winds around 10 miles per hour. The chance of precipitation is 50%. Heading into the overnight, expect it to be frigid. The forecast calls for cloudy skies with a chance of freezing rain, a chance of rain and slight chance of sleet in the evening, and then a chance of sleet after midnight. Little or no snow accumulation is expected. Ice accumulation of up to a tenth of an inch is possible. Lows are expected to be between 15 to 20 degrees with north winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 50%. So it's best to bundle up tight if you're headed out and don't forget about driving safely as there may be patches of ice or snow on the roads. That concludes our first show of Coleman Today and marks a new chapter for the reporters at the Coleman Tribune. Thank you all for watching and I look forward to seeing you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Stay warm, stay safe, and be sure to get your news from Coleman Today and the Coleman Tribune.